Hello there. Welcome to a new series where we're going to be getting tactical in Total War Warhammer. We'll take a look at different units, different situations, different things that can happen and how you can deal with them. In this first one we're going to be taking a look at long range artillery. I'll address some of the important things to think about with your artillery as well as some tactics that you can employ. I am going to assume that you understand the basics of what artillery is for though. I mean it's not exactly rocket science, although ironically you might actually be using some rockets. Artillery can be a real game changer if used correctly, or a complete waste of money in the wrong hands. So let's get to it. So let's start with the most basic of questions first of all. How much artillery should you bring? Straight to it, in my opinion, one or two units is enough. Unless you plan to play very defensively, or you know you have a map advantage, I can't really justify any more than that. As you probably know, artillery is there to damage an army before it gets to the proper full-on engagement. But how much time is that really? How long is artillery effective for? If one army charges towards the other one from the start of the battle, it takes about one or two minutes for them to reach them. That's a one or two minute window you have to do damage to your opponent with your expensive artillery. So if you spent a ton of money on artillery, it becomes useless after the first minute or two. Or maybe not useless, but certainly not effective. So unless both armies want to sit back and exchange artillery fire, you don't get a lot of time to use it. So as an example here, against the dwarves I've given them lots of artillery and I'm charging towards them with the chaos. Now the AI has laid it out in a stupid way because it's the AI, but you can see once I arrive to the battle and the main engagement begins, they have beaten down my units quite a lot, but there's not a lot their artillery can do now. They're simply too close and or run the risk of friendly fire if they shoot at me now. Lord knows that artillery units can't put up a melee fight whatsoever, so if somebody reaches them, they are done. And what you may end up finding is that you simply don't have enough troops to fight off your enemy. You won't have enough infantry to meet their infantry because you spent so much money on your artillery. Let's check out the kills of these artillery. Seven for that grudge thrower, seven for that one. So that's pretty pathetic for the amount of money you pay for them. Flame cannon here, zero kills. They were firing at highly armoured units, to be fair, and they probably did a good bit of damage, but it's simply not enough for the amount you pay for these units. Mainly because they didn't have enough time to really do anything. They probably spent most of their time reloading, because reloading is another factor you have to think about. So be aware that time is important in the artillery game. Now let's talk a little bit about types of artillery. Now there's only two kinds, much like any other unit, armour piercing and non-armour piercing. So on the green skins here, we've got Goblin Rock Throwers and Doom Divers. Let's check out the Rock Thrower damage first of all. So you can see there, mainly armour piercing damage. It's an armour piercing artillery. The explosive damage is armour piercing as well. Now for the Doom Diver. Let's see what that's got. Missile damage, mainly in the non-armour piercing variety. So not a lot of armour piercing there. Same with the explosive damage. So the Doom Diver is more effective against lightly armoured units. So keep that in mind for all artillery. Some are better for dealing with armoured units, some better for lighter units. If you fire the wrong kind at the wrong target, you're just reducing your own effectiveness. So make sure you bring the right tools for the job. Now let's say I was facing off against the Empire, which one should I bring? Well, to be honest, you could kind of bring one of each if you wanted to, because the Empire has a good mix of armoured and non-armoured units. Their infantry is quite lightly armoured, but their cavalry quite heavy. But then, for the price of these two artillery units, I could bring a unit of Black Orcs and a unit of Night Goblins. I can then ask myself, who's going to get more kills out of these two setups? The two artillery units, or the two infantry units? In this case, I'd say it could go either way. Black Orcs are really strong, Night Goblins are Night Goblins, but artillery can be great. If your opponent rushes you though, your artillery is going to be a little bit useless, compared to Black Orcs, who are useful in pretty much any situation. So that's again just playing on the money dynamic of your setup. Now what about if we were facing those dastardly dwarves? We all know they have a hell of a lot of armour, so how are we going to deal with them? Goblin rock throwers. As we just saw, doom divers don't have the armour piercing, so they're going to be pretty ineffective against dwarves. So armour piercing rock throwers are a good call. When selecting your artillery, just think about who you're facing and whether you need armour piercing or not. And then check out each of the units and see which one's the best for the job. You may also want to check out the range, because that can differ significantly through different types of artillery. The last thing I will say about types is that field guns are generally better for hitting fast moving targets, like cavalry, flying units or fast moving monsters. If you fire at fast units with things that fire in an arc like trebuchets, they're going to miss a lot. 
so things that fire in kind of a straight line like cannons or organ guns are better for fast moving targets, although their range is usually much shorter. Now one more thing to think about, this is my little army setup on Bretonia, I've got two field trebuchets here. What you need to think about is who you're targeting, not everyone is going to be a good target. For example, these field trebuchets fire in an arc, so they fire up and then it comes down. Vargeists and cavalry, too fast to shoot at with them really, you'll miss a lot, waste the ammo. What about crypt ghouls? Hmm, zombies? Hmm, skeleton warriors? Mwah. None of those are very dangerous, although infantry is my weakness, none of those are great units. Crypt horrors, they're pretty dangerous, but they can be fast moving. Graveguard with great weapons, hello, you're pretty dangerous to me and you're slow moving, so these are going to be a great target to shoot at. They're one of the best vampire units and I need to get them gone as much as possible before they get to the battle. Because being Bretonia, you have a lot of spears, so dealing with the monsters, not really a problem. They don't have great cavalry and I've got better cavalry, so cavalry isn't really a danger. Their biggest threat to me is infantry. My infantry is just spearmen, so I can't handle swords very well. So I'm going to focus fire, which means aiming all my units at one enemy unit. And those graveguard have taken a nice hit there. Lost quite a bit of health and that's just in one hit. And they were kind of clumped with other units, so that's another thing to look out for. If you see a massive clump of enemy units all together, sometimes it's just a good idea to fire at them, because it means that you probably won't miss, and you'll do a hell of a lot of damage to whatever is there. So sometimes picking out the enemy's strength is a good idea, but sometimes just trying to do as much damage as possible to anything can also be a good idea. Then you have to think about how much effort you want to put into protecting your artillery units. I've just got one unit of spears here to protect two units, that's probably enough don't need to make a great effort but sometimes you might have to, it depends how hard the enemy tries to go after your artillery. If you have brought a lot of artillery, you're going to need to protect it. If you don't, you may be wasting a lot of money if your enemy takes it out quickly. How much protection you give it should depend on how valuable the artillery is to your success. Now let's check back with those Graveguard. They're down to pretty much half health, so that's a good bit of damage on one of my enemy's most dangerous units. We just hit them again so they're going to be even more dead. On the right it looks like I'm pretty much done on that side, <laughs> very much lost on the right but we've severely won on the left so it's evening out, see if we can get any more damage to these Graveguard before they arrive. It's all these monsters, so many monsters, Graveguard are about to get there, oh they took one final hit, they're now down to 28 men. So you can see they're one most dangerous unit to me, but well, one of their most dangerous units to me is pretty much done. The spearmen will be able to finish them off no problems. But because the enemy rushed me, I didn't have a lot of time for my trebuchets to do anything, so now, like I say, they're kind of useless now that the battle is pretty much engaged. They took out one key unit, but is that enough? Would I have been better off spending the money on an extra unit of Grail Knights instead? These are the questions you have to ask yourself and think about when you're making your army selection. Who's going to do me more damage? Am I facing a rush army, potentially? But there is something you can do to buy your artillery more time. Let's have a look. So my little empire setup here has got a fair bit of artillery and we are popping off on some vampires but they're of course rushing me so what am I going to do? Well quite simply I'm going to send a couple of units on a suicide mission. Their job is to slow the enemy down and keep them clumped up in the middle for a while. I've just got two units of cheap swordsmen, they're just going to be the meat shields, waster units, whatever you want to call them. I'm just going to charge them up into the enemy, no regard, just going to try and spread them as wide as possible so that they stop as many units as possible. They're obviously not going to get a ton of kills, but this is a great way to buy your artillery extra time. It's only going to be an extra 30 seconds to a minute maybe, but that can add up a lot if you're trying to target specific units and get rid of them. And later on in the battle you can see, these swordsmen are still just about holding in the middle and they've held a lot of units back, which not only bought my artillery more time, but also gives me more time to deal with these flanking units that have come round. So I've staggered their army a bit just by using a few cheap units to hold them back. A pretty effective tactic in the right place. One little tactic that can be really useful for the late game if you can manage to keep your artillery alive that long is basically to keep enemy units that have routed from returning to the battle. So when a unit routes it says it's broken and then it runs away and eventually it'll decide to come back. Unless it says shattered then they're just completely going. So if you keep firing your artillery at broken units they may eventually shatter or run off the map. Either way the unit will be completely gone. If you target really good expensive units that may come back and be dangerous then obviously that's helpful. Artillery fire does provide a leadership penalty to the enemy as well. 
so you're going to help lower their leadership and get rid of them. You could always look for good terrain on the map to strategically place your artillery. This should make it easier for you to defend in some places. Artillery is of course great for taking out walls in siege battles as well. Blow a nice big hole in the wall allowing easy access for your massive spider to get through. And with that, I think that's about it. There's only so many tactics you can pull with artillery. It's not exactly mobile, so there's not a lot you can do with it other than shoot the crap out of everything. Let's finish by reiterating all the main points. Time is a factor. Are you really going to have enough time to use those five units of artillery that you brought before they become nearly pointless? Are the units cost effective? For the amount I paid for them, are they going to get me enough kills? Would the money be better spent on an extra infantry or cavalry unit instead? Who's going to get more kills? What type of unit should I bring? Armour piercing? Non-armour piercing? Anti-large? Something to deal with fast units? Build for your opponent. Choose your targets. Don't just leave your artillery on fire at will and let them fire at whatever they want. Pick the enemy's strength and get rid of it. And finally, if you want to get the most out of your artillery, protect it. And with that, we come to our end. Thanks for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'll be doing many more of these. I'll see you in the future.